Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome once again to the Eagles class. The Eagles class, a place where you mount up with wings and eagles. You saw above the storms, the challenges of life and ministry, more so equipped by the word of God to fulfill the purpose of God for your life. Reverend Ken Angiro here, bringing you the series that we are continuing with that is entitled Process to Product. Process to Product. And I want that to sink in you that for there to be a great product, there is a process. The process determines the quality of the product. And I know you want to be that great person that you're dreaming. I know you want to fulfill the purpose of God. God has a good plan for your life. We read in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. I know the plans that I have for you. He says they are not thoughts of evil, but they are good to give you a hope in the future. That's true. That good hope, that great future that, you going to, that you're going to be requires a process. And I want you to understand God has called us more to become than to do. And I will say it again, God has called us first to become, then to do. Very, very important. And as we are talking about process to product, our main uh, text is from the book of Jeremiah 18, verse 1 to verse 6. Jeremiah 18, verse 1 to verse 6. Before I read, let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your children. I thank you for your servants. I thank you, Lord, for the fire you brought us in this series of these teachings. I thank you, Lord, I ask for your grace in this session. I ask that, Lord, may this session encourage somebody. Let this session build somebody up in the faith. I ask that, Lord, may this session, O oh God, give direction to somebody. Let there be a prophetic confirmation to somebody concerning the journey, the process that you're taking them through, Lord, even in the making. I ask for insight, I ask for utterance, and give us all hearing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you to do it together with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Jeremiah 18, verse 1 to verse 6, I read from the New King James Version, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. He says, Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was making something at the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again into another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, says the Lord? He said, Look, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. That's the word of the Lord. We have seen the processes from, of making other vessels, of making pots and things like that. That's where we get the analogy to help us understand the process that God takes us through. We've seen sampling. The potter will go different places by the shores of the lake, by the banks of rivers, by some marshy or swampy areas, and in different places getting different types of clay soil, depending on what he wants to make. And once he's brought them, he has to soak them. We talk about soaking is the word of the Lord, spending time in the word of the Lord and getting a word from God. And after that, he's crushing so that one becomes soft and elastic to be moldable in the hands of God the crashing time, and from that there is the shaping. Exactly, that's when Jeremiah found the potter at the shaping place. That's where the wheel is. A lot of spinning, a lot of shaping, adding, subtracting, a lot of sometimes making changes. It's not coming out well, and it is crashed again. It's, it's, it's a time of, of really a lot of adjustments being made, a lot of changes being made. And once the pot is from the shaping, moment it goes to the drying and it has to dry in a shade not in the direct sunlight and it has to take time to dry so that it does not crack it is already looking as a vessel it has taken shape but it has to dry 
and uh, drying in a place where wind will just blow. That, that talks about being in the understanding the Holy Spirit, fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, so that your character, your, 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 all the faculties of your life are consolidated into one without cracks. And the last time we talked about the furnace, a place of affliction, a place of affliction, a place where there's a lot of pain in the furnace, a place where it appears all hell is broken loose, a place where you feel God has abandoned you. You feel that, oh, God is unfair. What you're going through is so painful. You wonder, why me? Why must I go through all this? A place where people sometimes look at you and they under ask what is wrong. The friends of Job came to Job and they told him, ah, Whatever you're going through, maybe it's a curse, maybe you've broken some law, maybe you've messed up some moral law or things like that. Even friends sometimes don't understand you. The furnace is a place of sometimes even loneliness. The furnace. But now, today I want to get us into another session. After the furnace, there's another stage that is called cooling. Cooling. After the vessel has come out of the furnace. You don't get out of the furnace and you go straight into functioning. There is a time of cooling. Because they come out of the furnace hot. Hot. There is cooling. You cool down. Because these things are done by God. You've got to be led by the Spirit of God. The fact that you have come out of the furnace does not mean that you just go straight and begin to function immediately. There is cooling. You cool down. You sit down. There's a moment of reflection. There's a moment of introspection. There's a moment of you, this vessel itself is cooling down. There's a moment when you just come out of the fire. You look at it and you begin to wonder. You begin to to, to, to wonder and say, you mean I went through this and here I am, I've survived? It's a moment as you cool down, you reflect, you say, if it were not for the Lord, I would be dead. If it were not for the Lord, I would be, I, I would not have made it cooling. You cool down. If it were not for the Lord. I remember the children of Israel when they came out of captivity. It was not nice to be in captivity. And they stayed by the rivers of Egypt. When they were there, they were singing. They would not sing the songs of the Lord in any other place. But, that's by the, third, by the rivers of Babylon. They would not sing there. It was not a place for singing. They told them, sing us the songs of the Lord. They were in the furnace. It was not easy for them. They knew they needed to sing in Jerusalem. So the moment you come out, while we came out of captivity, we were like men who dreamed. Is a moment of reflecting where you've come from. You see the goodness of God. You see the faithfulness of God. You say that despite this, God has preserved me. And there's something I want to talk about this moment of cooling. is a moment of reflection. The Bible tells us many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him from them all. There's a moment you come and you see the deliverance of the Lord. There are three levels of deliverance I want you to know. That God delivers us from trouble. You see trouble coming, but he does not allow you to go through trouble. So he delivers you from trouble. And then when you come out, you say, wow. The Egyptian you see today, you're not going to see them again. God did not allow the children of Israel to, to, to be touched by the Egyptians that were coming after them. Deliverance from trouble. So it means you are, you, they, I want you to understand, there are certain troubles that God spares you. He says, this one, you do not have the stamina to, to go through, and he delivers you from it. But there are people that the Lord delivers through trouble, through trouble. Psalm 23, verse 4, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I go through it. I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. I want you to see that. You've just come out of that trouble. You, you reflect, you say, wow, I was going through that valley of the shadow of death and I did not die. Oh, the Lord be praised. It's a moment of reflecting what happened. And there is a highest level of deliverance where God delivers you in trouble. He does not remove the trouble. You're right inside the trouble, but you're not dying. You're not being consumed. 
the burning bush of Moses was burning, but it was not being consumed. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 43, you'll go through the waters, they will not drown you. You will go through the fires, they will not burn you. It's because you reflect what you've just come out from and it prepares you for the next stage. It's a moment of introspection. It's a moment of just saying, this is the doing of the Lord. If it were not for the Lord, I would have perished. If it were not for the Lord, our enemies would have consumed us alive. It's a moment of cooling. And when you cool down, you settle down, you meditate. You, you examine, you replay what you've gone through and you just see the grace of God, you see the goodness of God. It, it, it brings a heart of gratitude, a heart of thanksgiving in you. It's a moment you cool down. While others may be jumping up and down, there's a moment that you need to, be, to cool down. There's a moment the Bible says, be still and know that I am God. Because you've just come out of something that is unusual. You've just come out of the furnace. There's a moment you come and reflect and you begin to think, wow, how? How did I make it? How did I come to the place where I am? How? This is just the doing of the Lord. This is the doing of the Lord. This cooling stage prepares you for the next session that we're going to talk about. It's a moment you sit down. There are certain experiences that God takes you as an individual. You're the one who knows how it felt. You can try to verbalize it, but, the, the, but there's, there, there's no expression in words that can really carry exactly what happened. You know it. And that's a moment of introspection, a moment of reflection yourself, a moment of knowing the dealings with God, with your personal dealings with God when you're in the furnace. That's an important stage. There's a moment where I tell people, you need to be alone with God. There's a moment of the secret place of Psalm 91. The Bible says that Psalm 91, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my shield and my rampart. I will not be afraid of any man. But see one thing he says, a thousand shall, be my, shall fall by my side, ten thousand by my right hand, but it shall not come near me. It's a statement that is made by David. He sees what has happened and he comes and he pens that psalm. It's a moment of reflection. You're in the secret place of the Most High. Somebody else does not know the pain that you went through, but you know how excruciating that pain was. And here you are. Is a moment of cooling. I want to liken it to the moment a woman has given birth right after labor. Labor is a chaotic time. It's just like the time of furnace. I've seen, I've, I've visited the labor world and, and the way the women weep and the things that they do. It's, they, they have no shame. They, they, they will speak all kinds of words they would speak. It's, it's so painful. And then the nurses are hard on them. The midwives are so hard on them. There's pain. They, whatever. Some don't want to see their husbands. Some want to see their husbands. They're crying. They're not hitting the wall. It, it appears a chaotic moment. But Right after the child is born, they come down. I remember when my wife was giving birth to our firstborn son, Shekinah, through labor pain, trying moment, painful moment, painful moment, oh, all the groaning in pain, all these. And then the moment the boy was born and the boy cried, the next thing I had my wife ask is, where is all that pain gone to? Suddenly, all that pain just left suddenly. And she spoke in such a clear voice. I had the nurses and midwives laughing. And so there is a moment of cooling down and reflection. You see, just a short while ago, I was screaming my head off. Just a short while ago, I thought I was dying. <laughs> I thought I was dying. I thought I was finished. And here I am. Some of you, you've just come out of it. You feel like jumping to go and give testimonies, whatever. But before you go and feel the, testify out there, there is a moment you sit down and you cool and you reflect. It helps you. It helps you really ascribe value to God. It helps you to know how much God loves you and how much you love him.
When you see that, God, you permitted me to go through this, and here I am. Oh, you see the way you're shining. You see the glory of God in your life from the furnace. But you're still hot. So you cool off as you reflect, as you examine yourself. You see that your values have changed. You see what God has made of you from the furnace. You cool off. You cool off. It's important. Of all the emotions, of the pain, of the whatever. Sometimes during the, during the furnace, you, you felt abandoned. You felt people betrayed you. You felt people hurt you. You felt whatever. All those feelings, all those emotions have to go. They have to go. You're in the furnace. You're alone. You call for help. No one was there for you. I remember the Apostle Paul writing to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4. He says, at my first defense, no one was with me. But anyway, I don't lay the charge against them. He says, Delmas left me. The people, the help I needed at that time, nobody wanted to stand with me. But now he comes and says, I do not lay charge on them. You're cooling off. You're cooling off. You're not being driven by emotions. Your feelings, you cool off because in the furnace, emotions run high. In the furnace, adrenaline is high. Lots of things are happening in the furnace. Where is so and so? I thought you'd stand with me at this particular time of, of pain in my life, but you're not there. But now I've come out of that pain. And you think that I should not see this person. Oh, I want to meet this person to get a piece of my mind. No, that's the moment you cool off. You cool off. You allow men to be men and God to be God. That's the truth. So it's a moment of cooling off. I don't want to talk to you, child of God. You that has just come out of the furnace. <laughs> I want you to know, please, is there the time to hold people in your heart, to hold grudges? Is there the time to, to have scores to settle with people? No. I want you to get this. Cool up. It is God. This is your work with God. This is your work with God. There are people that would not be able to withstand the heat that you're going through. They would not. Not that they hate you. They love you, but the, what you're going through was just too much for them to bear. Not that they hate you. So understand them. Let them be them. Jesus, when he was facing the cross, the closest, his 12 disciples, they ran away. John and Mark ran away naked. They grabbed his linen and he took off naked. Peter denied him three times. Judas, the one who betrayed him. And the others took off. They were nowhere. And the women were even following at a distance. It was a risky thing because anybody who would yeah, come, perhaps they would have shared in the cross and nobody wanted to die before their time. And so they took off. That's the truth. Not that they hated Jesus. Because after Jesus was resurrected, I see them coming together again. The cross was just too much for them to bear. And that is why after you are done with the furnace, cool off, child of God. Cool off, servant of God. Be sober. Don't come with a lot of emotions. You're not coming to prove or to disapprove. You're coming to fulfill a purpose. And that's why cool off so that you're sober to understand why did I go through this furnace? What does God want? There's a moment you cool off. You don't, no vessel comes out of the furnace right into use. No. No. There's that moment of cooling off. And you need to cool off. I pray that God will give you grace that you will not be led by emotions after you, after your furnace. The Bible tells us Job, the moment Job was done with the furnace, his friends, three friends, Eliphaz, Zophar, and Bildad, God told them, you go to Job, let him pray for you. I don't see Job coming and telling them, hey, you guys did not stand with me, I don't want to see you. No, he prayed for them. Cool off. Don't carry your emotions into this. I remember Joseph, the moment he was done with the prison, prison for years, falsely accused he's in prison. And then Joseph is now prime minister. I don't see Joseph coming to revenge. Imagine Potiphar's wife was coming to buy food and Joseph was there. I don't know if it were you, what would you have done? You would have said, woman, you falsely accused me. Do you know I spent this number of years in prison? Oh, he did not do that. Cool off. Cool off. 
cool off. Get your emotions out. Don't be driven by the emotions. There are things God has ordained that you go through. And so don't take it personal. Hating people, uh, holding grudges with people, holding scores with people that you want to settle scores with people. After the, the furnace, cool off. Do a reflection. And when you sit down and you cool off, it will just make you love God more and love the people more. And that makes you a great product for God to use. I know somebody, you had made some permanent decisions. There are some people you had written off in your life. You say, so-and-so, it's over. It's over between me and so-and-so because at my greatest hour of need, they did not show up. Somebody, you were Peter, who denied you three times at your hour of need. You think you don't want to see him again. Jesus went for Peter. And that's why I share with you cool off. Don't bring your emotions after the furnace. Some of you right now, you just come out, out of the furnace and now you're relaxing or you've gotten a job and now business is good. And that's why somebody, somebody that, that you thought should have stood with you and they did not stand with you and they're in problem. You say, I, 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 I don't want to see you. I don't want to see you, please. Please, please, you know. You know when I needed you, you did not pick my calls. I sent you text messages, you did not respond. I tried calling out for help from you, you were not there. Why do you come to me now? Cool off. Don't carry your emotions into this. Don't carry your emotions. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for your children that have gone through tough times, they've gone through afflictions, they've gone through the furnace. I ask that, Lord, at this moment, that, Lord, they are not going to carry their emotions. They're not going to carry pain. They're not going to carry, to, 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 to have uh, grudges at this moment. I ask, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that, Lord, in their hearts, they will forgive. They will let go of people who hurt them, of people who, who, who did not stand with them at the greatest hour of need. I ask, give them the grace to forgive, to let go and to connect with the people that are destiny, help us, destiny, connect us, oh God. I pray that your hand of grace will be upon them. Glory, praise, and honor belongs to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you so much. God bless you. That is a session we had of the Eagles class now. Process to product. We are done with the cooling after the furnace. We are preparing for the next show, and I know you will be there getting ready not just to hear this, but to implement it in your life. God bless you. See you next time.